What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video in which we're going to be following up the rocket that you can see on screen here, or at least one of the two rockets you can see on screen. Obviously that little one is the miniature Saturn V from last Saturday's video in which I decided to showcase just how big a rocket really needs to be in Kerbal Space Program to replicate the mission path of the Apollo 11 mission. And then as I said in that video that at some point I would be showing exactly what the power of a true scale Saturn five can really do in Kerbal Space Program. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Here it is, not the most blazing of starts off the launch pad, but we do quickly pick up some good speed. Launch ascent profile, fairly standard, pointing 45 degrees by the time we reach 10 kilometers. And then from there, gradually tipping over very slowly around the point where we're at about like, I don't know, 40, 40 seconds to a minute away from our apoapsis, at which point we start flying flat. That's the ascent profile. I know we're not really there yet, but whatever. Um, I'm sure you can ascertain from the title of this video that today's subject is, of course, sending this thing to Tylo and back. Tylo was the second choice for uh, the destination of this video. The first idea I had was sending an e uh, a rocket to Eve and back, ideally Eve C level and back in the profile of a Saturn V. But, you know... I tried various different EVE lander configurations because I was aiming for sea level or, you know, very close to sea level just to make it as adaptable for anyone's missions as possible. But unfortunately, I just couldn't make an EVE lander that would fit inside the profile of that fairing just there. And you can see this rocket as it is, is actually slightly taller than a normal Saturn V, that rocket uh, that rocket, that upper fairing there is slightly stretched out compared to what it really should be if we were going for a proper Saturn V recreation, but I feel like it's pretty close nonetheless. But it, an EVE lander would definitely not have fit in the fairing that I'm using at the moment. There are ways to make very, very lightweight EVE landers. Uh, I would point you towards Bradley Wistons' sea level EVE lander. And I think it was either Squiddy or like Nuclear Turkey or something like that also made a very, very small EVE sea level lander as we uh, deploy the launch escape system there and the lower stage. Um, the secret is really making a propeller powered craft that can ascend through the thickest parts of EVE's atmosphere and then launch once you're at a high enough altitude to use the much more efficient but much more less effective engines in a thick atmosphere uh, from a high altitude so you don't have to have like as much fuel reserves. But I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to keep it pure as like a chemical rocket because I don't know, I just felt a little bit more a little bit more pure to the Apollo eleven formula. And also I am terrible at stock propellers and didn't really fancy having to teach myself how to build them. So this is what we got. After Eve, I was like, hey, where else is difficult to visit in the Kerbin system? And three places sprung to mind. Uh, I, I discounted Juna because Juna is actually not too hard once you know how to do it. So the three places I picked were uh, Tylo, which is obviously what I en eventually ended up going with. Merc not Mercury, Moho. And of course, uh, Elu as well. Elu is not as difficult as people think it is. It's only really challenging because of the extreme distance from Kerbin it is. And obviously, solar panels aren't very effective. But we're going to Jewel, to be honest, and they're not very effective there either. So this mission is going to be almost predominantly entirely powered by the alternator on board the nuclear rocket engine and the RTGs that you currently can't see because they're behind a the fairing, but the fairing will be deployed in just a second. So... Uh, that I felt that they were too minor of things really for Elu to be seriously considered. So then it came to uh, Mo. I say Mercury again. Moho or Tylo. Moho, Tylo, and Eve are kind of three coins, three coins to the same side, three sides to the same coin. Which even then doesn't really work unless I guess we could count the edge as a side of the coin. Uh, Eve is the hardest place to leave. Uh, as in take off from, and that's including Kerbin in that list as well. Tylo is the hardest place to land on, and Moho is the hardest place to reach. So those are like the two, as in hardest place to reach in terms of the amount of Delta V, potential Delta V required. So those are kind of the three things there. I decided not Moho just because it's a bit boring, isn't it? And Tylo, I think, is a little bit harder than Moho, I think, for the layman. So Tylo it was. Tylo, it's almost like it's basic. It is effectively Kerbin without an atmosphere, so it doesn't sound too bad because landing on Kerbin is very easy. But then again, you can use a heat shield and a parachute to land on Kerbin with absolutely no fuel expenditure. But you have to do it entirely using engine burning to land on Tylo. So it's almost like doing a Kerbin launch in reverse. It's not quite as bad as that because when you launch from Kerbin, you are fighting the atmospheric drag to ascend. But it's pretty close. However, because there is no atmosphere on Tylo, we can use very, very efficient engines that don't weigh very much and are very, very efficient but don't work well in atmospheres because it's not a problem in Tylo because there is no atmosphere. So Tylo landers don't necessarily have to be too big. And as you can see, 
it's not on screen anymore, but it was. Uh, Tylo Lander is actually very, very small. The other reason I wanted to, I went with Tylo over Eve is because it's much easier to build a lander for Tylo that looks at least somewhat reminiscent of the Apollo landers. Um, I'm using the correct command pod. It's from the Making History expansion pack and is a direct recreate uh, replica of the Apollo style lander. You know the Moona, no Luna. <laughs> you know you play too much KSP when you start calling the Moon. Mun and Luna, Muna, etc. etc. As a side note, I still sometimes think of Earth as having two satellites for thinking, oh yes, Mimus is a Kerbal Space Program thing. It's not actually in the real world. Uh, anyway, I, I digress, I digress. Um, yeah, I don't use this command pod very much. Um, the only other time I used it was in my other Saturn V recreation, so I felt like this was a good excuse to use it again. I feel like this command pod doesn't get used very much because it weighs so much more than the other two-seat lander, uh, lander cam, but it does have the added benefit of having a larger than average monitor propellant bay. It also has RCS thrusters built right into it, and it also has liquid fuel and oxidizer supplies as well. So it's not just a command pod, it also has fuel reserves in it as well, which is something important to bear in mind when comparing the statistics of the various command pods. One downside to this is that it doesn't have any SS wheels, I guess, because the intention is the players be need to be relying on the RCS thrusters rather than actually relying on SAS. But, you know, I think in Kerbal Space Program it's cool, to, it's, it's easy just to use SAS. So I did fit a small reaction wheel to it just before the command um, docking port. But other than that, I think like, it's a pretty decent lander cam. I guess it's not my first choice. I probably will still keep using the regular old Mark II lander cam just because it's easier, you know, to incorporate into lander designs. But this is still good. I feel like it gets undersold for the wrong reasons. It's still a decent command pod in terms of the overall balancing of it. And especially when you're trying to recreate the Saturn V rocket, it's it's per it's pretty perfect. So here we are on the way to Jewel. I do appreciate and acknowledge that I haven't really talked too much about the flight itself so far, but then you know, I have done quite a few missions to Jewel recently in my Life on Lathe series, which, by the way, hasn't been abandoned, will be coming, I'm assuming it's going to come next week, unless I think of some other amazing video <laughs> to do in the interim, like, I don't know, a good Blunderbirds opportunity presents itself or some major news happens. In fact, the Falcon Heavy's launching next week, isn't it? Or the week after. I'm, I'm a bit behind. Given that I said I'd started a series on this channel called Space News, I should probably follow the Space News a bit closer. I'm sure it's next week, but I feel like now I'm on the spot talking to you guys. You're gonna, I'm going to get it wrong. Either way, <laughs> so maybe I'll do like a Falcon Heavy related video next week, but Life on Lathe certainly is not gone. It will be resuming at some point. I have, in fact, I've built the rocket. I haven't filmed the mission yet, but I've built the rocket and ship and all that for the next installment of the series, which will be coming sooner rather than later, put it that way. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I've done quite a few episodes of Life and Life so far in which I d have discussed how to get to Jewel and subsequently land on its moons. And so I didn't really feel there was much need to keep on retreading the same topics over and over. Tylo is pretty much the same in terms of getting to it compared to Lathe. In fact, it's easier because it has a larger uh, gravity well and therefore a larger sphere of influence, which is much easier to get an encounter, which, as you can see, is all in the past now. We are, in fact, circularized at Tylo. So we're going to do a few burns at periapsis to lower our apoapsis height down to, you know, be a circular orbit, just because we're going to be maximizing our use of the Oberth effect, which I've already discussed ad nauseum as well, so I won't rehash again. But so also, you know, we just want to be spending as much time burning at periapsis as possible, just because if we're not burning at periapsis, we're going to end up lowering our periapsis and smashing our craft into the surface of the moon, which, you know, we don't really want, ideally. So, you know, Neil Buzz and uh, Martin Kerman, they, they want to, Martin Kerman, <laughs> Michael Kerman, uh, need to finish their mission here. So, yeah, we've pretty much finished our circularization now, and then we can get ready to launch our brave Kerbals to the surface of Tylo. There we are, nearly fully circular now, just one more quick burn at periapsis to get our apoapsis matching it. I aimed for about 25 thousand meters off the surface just because that would make us nice and safe from any uh, potential impacts with the surface of Tylo. Although Tylo's terrain, at least relative to its you know diameter, is pretty flat. We, there's not many high mountains that you're at risk of striking. So yep, we have our Kerbals safely transferred over. We can decouple our docking port. Our um, The lander there doesn't have any RTGs or anything, so we're going to deploy that solar panel, which although admittedly won't generate that much electricity this far from the sun, will at least provide some power sustenance 
whilst we descend. So I'm using the Aero Spike engine, which traditionally is better suited for atmospheric landings, but it's still a fairly well-balanced engine, to be honest, in terms of its weight and ISP in a vacuum, which is obviously the only ISP value we care about for this landing because we're only landing in a vacuum. I also really liked it for this mission. One of the main reasons, to be totally honest, is because it's such a small profile, it would really fit uh, the general look of a man lander. And of course, it means that landing legs will easily extend below its uh, the end of its like spike. I was going to say nozzle. It doesn't really have a nozzle, does it? That's the point. Uh, they'll extend easily beyond its spike without needing to do some like custom support work to get the legs to extend low enough. So that's kind of why I went with the aero spike, even though there are definitely better and more suitable engine configurations for this type of mission. And again, this comes to the other inaccuracy, for want of a better word, because let's face it, this whole mission is not particularly accurate to the Apollo 11 mission, and I guess the subsequent Apollo missions that landed on the moon, um, in that we've not got a second engine stage for the ascent, we're going to be landing, and then subsequently ascending using the same aero spike engine. Admittedly, I guess it is a different stage, aside from the very, very last puff of fuel just to do the final part of our landing uh so it's more i guess it's closer to a recreation of the uh failed soviet n1 land was it, is it called the lk lander i really should know this and really should now pause my commentary and check but we don't do that because i can continue to poke flaws in this whole video by saying that i i forgot to make sure that my ladder wouldn't just go straight through one of the landing legs which as you can see uh, does go through several. I mean, it's not a huge problem because when Kerbals are on ladders, they can actually just shift through landing legs, so it still works, but it would have been better, I think, just from a cosmetic point of view to not do that. But at least we have a ladder because for those that don't know, jetpacks, or, you know, the EVA packs, I should say, because people sometimes get annoyed when I say jetpacks, even though you guys know what I mean when I say jetpacks, right? I know it's not literally a jet either way. The EVA packs don't work on Tyler because the gravity is just too strong. There are our Kerbals magnificently uh, sucking in the great achievement that they've just achieved. Uh, probably shouldn't have used the word achievement trice, but we're going with it. Trice? I can't even get my words out today. It's been a long day, guys. I'm very tired. It's Thursday, which is nearly the end of the week, and so I'm getting pretty tired at this point, and I have been a bit ill <laughs> these past few days as well, so, you know, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I mean, at least Thursday. Thursday, I think Thursday. To just completely stop talking about this video, <laughs> let's just talk about the ascent because this is probably a more, one of the more interesting aspects of the flight, as well as the apparent um, autonomous destruction of our flag. Rest in peace. So we've no longer got a flag planted, but we must push ahead because the command pod is above us and we need to get rendezvoused with it. So we can pretty much fly flat immediately on Tyler because we have a very high amount of thrust to weight ratio in this thing. Do a little bit of burning initially just to make sure we're definitely going to smash into a hillside, but other than that, we can fly flat pretty much immediately. And we've got a pretty close encounter, to be honest. About a one kilometer of separation when we eventually finalize it. And we've got not very much delta V remaining, admittedly, just under 300 meters per second. So we don't have enough delta V to actually perform our target rendezvous, uh, at least if we want to do it quickly, which is what I wanted to do. No <laughs> spoiler alert. So what I did was I just killed off all our velocity, used up all our remaining delta V, and then performed the rendezvous itself using the uh, command pod, which, you know, Michael Kerman is still aboard and can control and can rendezvous uh, himself. Anyway, as I was saying before I, I decided to talk about the actual video on screen, Thursdays, I, if I had to rank them, probably my fourth favourite day of the week, right? So Friday will be my third favourite, that's obvious. Uh, Saturday is the favourite, and Sunday is the second favourite, only because of the existential dread and the constant living in denial that Monday is coming. Uh, Monday, you know, it always receives the reputation of being the worst day of the week. Um, you know, because obviously it's the week day after a weekend, you've got to go back to work. But you know what I think? I think Tuesday is the worst. Tuesday often gets overlooked, but I think Tuesday is the worst. Because, like, what is Tuesday? really got going for it, right? Monday, everyone knows is bad. It's the first day of the week. Everyone hates Monday. Monday's got something, okay? Saturday is the first day of the weekend. It's the one day you can wake up late, go to bed late. Friday, you know, you can have a late night, go out, nothing on the work the next day. Sunday, you get a nice line. They've got things going for them, right? Thursday, you know, well, it's the middle of the week, but it's Friday tomorrow, so you've got that to look forward to. Wednesday, you've made it halfway through the working week. You're getting there. It's a good day-ish. Tuesday, right? 
It's still the beginning of the week. You've just come off Monday, so you already hate life as it is. And then you've got Tuesday, which represents no real milestone or kind of goal in sight. It's just a day. It's just a day. It doesn't. It's not even got the reputation of being the worst day. It's just there, hanging out with the other days, acting like it belongs, but it doesn't belong. If you vote Matt Lown for pre- president of the wo- the Earth, uh, I promise I will eradicate Tuesday because it's a terrible day. And Tuesday, you need to get you need to get it together. You need to get it together Tuesday. Quite frankly, you need to sort it out. Tuesday, worst day ever. Uh, there goes the lander. <laughs> so yeah, I, I put myself onto it. That was a, a strange rant that I didn't actually plan. It just popped into my head. Like, you know what? I thought of this day. I was like, you know what? Tuesday. Screw Tuesday. What has it got going for it? <sighs> anyway, there's our lander. RIP. We can cut to the command pod. I didn't want to leave any space junk in orbit, which as you can see is why I accidentally uh, edited far more Delta V than we actually needed in this stage, because if I wanted to make this as efficient as possible, I would have had a similar asparagus setup to our Tylo like surface lander and the, the tanks attached to this craft would detach once they were drained and they would all drain in sequence so that we could keep the mass of the craft as light as possible and we therefore wouldn't have had to have as much fuel as we currently do. I mean, we didn't need as much fuel as we do anyway because we have massively too much Delta V before we really needed to, but um, you know, at least it means we'd have to think too hard about uh, our uh, exit from Jewel, and I did a very, very, very inefficient Kerbin encounter because I knew I had the Delta V to play with, and I guess it means we don't have to do an aero break to capture and circularize around Kerbin. So we have that realism factor going for us, I guess, if that's something you care about. Uh, no, like I say, I didn't want to leave any space junk in orbit, so I, I went with like a single solid monolithic uh, thing. That's why I that's why I went with this setup. I feel like the point of this sentence and tangent was lost, but that was that was all I had to say really. Speaking of topics that I had to talk about and then subsequently didn't, uh, there is actually a music video for this video. I know, right? 17 minutes in, I'm now telling you about the abridged version of this video. So you can go and click the old link relu in the description-y boo. That was, that was dumb, <laughs> if you want to watch it. But, you know, speaking of music videos in general, you know, it, it, like, and that kind of takes me, it's not a criticism of YouTube, because I guess it's not really their fault their hand was forced. But for those that have been, first of all, thank you, those of you that have stuck around with this channel since, you know, its inception. I, I used to always just make um, music videos. I used to be, like, a fan of watching people like Mr. Overflow and Hazardish and Cupcake Landers, and they would always just make, like, video, music videos, and so I wanted to make music videos as well. Uh, so I would just use, like, copyrighted music. I knew I wouldn't be able to monetize the videos. I didn't really care about that. I just prioritized making fun videos uh, first and foremost. So I would made a lot of, like, videos using copyrighted music, which at the time was fine on YouTube. It just meant that the original artist and or record label would put ads on the video on your behalf and they would just claim all the revenue for it, which I don't really agree with and is a topic for it, is another topic all on its own, but I won't cover it at this point because I appreciate it's a very difficult uh, thing to enforce when you really think about it. But a lot of songs now are not available for use on youtube so my first choice for the music video which the music videos i make generally are always still demonetized like they're not demonetized as in because they're inappropriate content but they're just unmonetizable because there was a content id match a correct content id match uh of the song i used and so the record label immediately put their own like ads on the video and they claimed all the revenue which side note people have criticized me i do i know you guys i know for a fact that objectively i am perfect so i know and i know you guys agree with this as well so i know it comes as a shock to you too that there are people that don't like me um a lot more now i've done this uh hopefully it was a satirical tangent but i know there are people that probably now don't like me <laughs> okay let's not let's start this again there are people that don't like me basically based on some comments i've seen and reddit threads that i've been tagged in for no reason i guess other than to tell me that they don't like me but people have said that i complain a lot about getting demonetized first of all i've never actually been demonetized i know touch touch words I, I feel like i've said that i'm going to get demonetized but i've never actually been demonetized or if i have it's been for very very legitimate reasons that i 
technically agree with. I think the one I've been demonetized for is I basically just drank an entire bottle of whiskey on camera. I did it as a student, okay, so it was a little bit more acceptable to be a chronic alcoholic back then. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's fair enough if I'm getting demonetized. It's probably not something advertisers want to be associated with. Although, come to think of it, I have actually been demonetized for a video that has 150 views, and it was a speed drawing of Ron Burgundy. Go figure. I don't know. But generally, from all my videos I put effort into, I haven't been demonetized. But I have said, you know, what I what I say to encourage people to watch the music videos is that, look, I'm not trying to make you go to watch the music video because I'm going to get more ad revenue because the video itself isn't monetizable because the record label has put ads on it. I'm not saying that as a complaint because I understand that I've used copyrighted material. And I'm just saying, like, look, I really liked the video. If you guys want to watch it, know that I'm not recommending it out of malice or, I don't know, ulterior motive. It's because I really liked the video. And I feel like some people will still be cynical. So if I clarify that, no, I'm definitely not making money out of it, people might more likely to click it. That's, that's that story. But increasingly, it's becoming harder and harder to find songs for music videos. Most of them, like, I was going to use a Fratelli song, I forget, or maybe it was just a John Fratelli song. I think I was going to use... Ma no, i tell you what I was going to use. I was going to use the inspirational carpet song Saturn V, because, hey, what a topical song to use. But no, not available for use on YouTube. It will get muted. Your video will get, your video will get muted. I'm like, why can't the record label just take all the ad revenue? I don't care. It would have been a cool song to use. And so now... That's one of the reasons I don't really make accompanying music videos for my commentaries. Because back in back in the day, back in 2016 and 17, I would always make a music video for my uh, commentary videos, or at least the vast majority of them. But you know, these days it's just like, it's it's quite demoralising. Like oh, I'll use this song, okay, no, that will get blocked. Let's use this song, oh, it will get muted. Oh, let's use this song, oh, it, it won't get blocked except for the. 243 countries it will get blocked in which is basically all of the first world countries so it's becoming quite difficult to make music videos unless you use more royalty free music and it's quite hard to find royalty free music that everyone else doesn't already use that's one of the, that was one of the challenges of making expedition eve and green harvest which were two videos that i knew wouldn't get very 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 many views statistically i just wanted to make them for me but I didn't want them to get blocked in country, so I had to use royalty-free music. And uh, it was difficult, and I've basically completely exhausted my known library of songs that are royalty-free, but not many people use. I'm not sure what point I was trying to make with this rant. Rant? Not rant, you know, point I was trying to make with this thought uh, stream of consciousness. I also realise I've completely failed to talk or even men mention an entirely an entire segment of this video and that was i realized i had too much delta v so i decided to do my entire air um curbing capture using engine burning i still had a lot of delta v left so i thought yeah let's just do a minimus landing why not so i did a minimus landing and that's it there because you know our tylo flag got destroyed I felt we should probably have a flag planted on a different celestial body that isn't Kerbin at some stage at least in this video. Let's just stick it on Minmus. And to be honest, we probably had enough fuel for the month to be honest, but at this point it was getting very late. I just wanted to go to bed and finish the mission. So speaking of going to bed and finishing the mission, here we are re-entering Kerbin. We don't have all our ablator there because I generally just cut down the ablator on those heat shields because you never end up using all of it and you know it saves a lot of weight. Or at least, you know, a significant weight by shaving off some of it. Uh, but that pretty much wraps this video up, to be honest. I feel like this commentary as a whole has been far more rambly than my commentaries usually are. But I feel like I, I, I feel like I enjoy my, my more ra making my more rambly commentaries. And I think the general consensus is people like it. I know there will always be people that don't like the rambly com com commentaries. But, you know... You can't please everyone, I suppose. Would you prefer this sort of commentary where I didn't really talk too much about the video itself? Or would you prefer the more standard commentary in which I talk about the aspects of each mission? Because as people have pointed out, I haven't... There's not many things in KSP I haven't done. So I think in order to keep the videos at least somewhat engaging, I could talk about things that aren't necessarily happening real-time on screen. Just a thought. I don't know. I'd love to hear your feedback. And I guess, you know, on the subject of feedback, what did you think of this mission? Because as you can see, it's all finished. So I thought, you know, Michael Kerman, he's been stuck in that command pod for both the Minmus landing and the Tylo landing. Let's give him at least some 
something to do. So he can go ahead and plant our final flag, our third and final flag, but only our second flag that ended up surviving this mission. And that is, of course, marking our brave landing in the Kerbin Deserts. I guess if we were going for the uh, Apollo theme, we probably should have landed in the ocean, but I've only just thought of this. I've already recorded the mission. I ain't going back, mates, to be honest. Let's face it. On screen are links to videos. Uh, on the left, let's stick the uh, the mini Saturn V I did from last week, just to kind of link it back to this video. On the right is just chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. We also have links to Twitter, Discord, and my merchandise in the description. Have a good day.